right, a Berkey Academy viewer had a question and was asking, in Excel, can we add a picture to a graph? And of course the answer is yes, there are several different ways you can do it, and I'll show you a few different ways we can do that. But first, let me just say, just because you can do something does not mean that it's always a good idea. You want to keep your graphs as simple and as clean looking as possible, and you never want to add anything to a graph that distracts from the ability of the graph to tell you what the data is saying. Yes, I'm going to show you a few things to do. Some of them are going to look ridiculous, so let's dive in. So first I'm going to show you how you can add picture as a fill to the background of a graph. Then we'll make a picture transparent and we'll throw it on top of the graph. Then what we'll do is we'll make a picture transparent, we'll save it, and then we'll add it as fill, which is probably the best idea out of all of these. And I'm going to be using a program called PicPic, -Pic, which is a free program, although you could also use Microsoft Paint if you wanted to or any other picture program. And then I'm going to show you a few little crazy ideas that I think look absolutely terrible. You should not do them, but I'll show you anyway, because there might be a use case for some of these things in some cases. All right, so let's dive in. The data we're going to be using today is this data set of 93 cars from 1993. And it's got a lot of good variables. Some of them are categorical and most of them are numeric or quantitative variables. I'll add a link in the video description so that you can download this data if you want to. But over here, I've already created a scatter plot looking at horsepower on the x-axis and the price of cars in thousands on the y-axis. And I've also created a bar graph here with the uh, frequencies of the types of different cars in this data set. So the first thing we need to do is to bring a picture into Excel. There are a few ways you can do that, but the most straightforward way is just to go to insert up here on the command bar and then go to pictures. If you want to insert a picture from your own computer or you could go to online pictures. That's what I'm gonna do because I want to use pictures that are free to use in a YouTube video like this. So Creative Commons license pictures. And I clicked on cars so we can look at some different pictures of cars that I might be able to add to the graph. So let's uh, select this nice green car here. So I'll just uh, click that and then click insert. And that inserts the picture along with a little credit statement, which I think is a, an excellent idea. Although in this case, it says this photo by unknown author is licensed under Creative Commons by license. A Creative Commons by license means you can use it for free as long as you credit the author of the photo. But since it's by unknown author, we don't need to worry about that. So let's click this little box down here on the bottom, this little text box, and separate it from the picture, drag it away a little bit, and then that will allow us to delete it by hitting the delete key. So we've got this nice picture of a green car. The first thing I would do to edit this and fix it a little bit is get rid of all this white space on the top and the bottom. We don't have to do that, but uh, right click and go to crop. Then we can drag the corners down and up to get rid of a lot of that white space. And then we can just click over here and now we've got just the car without a whole lot of extra white space. A couple of ways we can add this picture to a graph. Now let me show you the easiest way. Just go into the graph here and right click and go to fill and go down to the fill options and click picture. And that brings up basically the same picture options. We can add a file or online pictures. And I'm gonna click online pictures and just select the same picture of the green car that we were looking at before. So let me just click that, click insert. And what that does is insert the picture of this green car behind the grid lines and behind the dots. Leaves the dots plainly visible above the picture of the car. Now, one thing I don't like about this is that the car's colors are so dark that it does interfere with our ability to see the dots. So I don't really like that idea. So let me right click, fill, to say no fill, and that'll get rid of the car. So let's use this picture here and let's make it a little bigger and let's make it transparent or partially transparent. So right click on it, format picture, and go over here to the little picture of the picture, the last little icon here. And let's increase the transparency until we can still see the car, but see through the car pretty well. Let's crank it up to, uh, I don't know, 80% maybe. 
or you can click in the box over here and just type the, the number 80. All right, now let's close that window. And now we could just drag the picture on top, but a better option is probably to copy the picture. So copy, then click in the graph and paste the picture. We could hit edit paste or we could hit control V on a Windows computer. And the benefit to this is this picture is now part of the graph when we paste it in there, right? I can't drag it out of the picture like we could if I had just dragged it onto the picture. And now if we move the graph, the uh, picture of the car will move with it and stay put. So this is okay, I like this, the only thing wrong with doing this in my eyes is that the picture now is technically on top of the graph. And if you look really closely as we move the picture, it actually changes the color of the dots a little bit. And in some situations, this might not be an ideal solution. What I would like to do is to insert this picture in its form now where it's kind of faded out, but have it behind the dots and behind the grid lines so that it's not interfering with what's going on with the data at all. So one way to do that is to take this picture and we can copy it. So right click, copy, and then we could open up Microsoft Paint or we could open up, in my case, I like the program called PicPic. Pick. And here on PicPic, Pick, we can click new, create a new image and it says, what canvas size? How large of a picture do you want? And well, we want it to be the same size as the clipboard since we already copied the picture to the clipboard. So we can click new and that creates a blank picture and then we can hit control V or we could paste it there. And so now we have this image where we can save it as an image file. So let's do that. And again, you could do this in Microsoft Paint or some other program if you wanted to. So let's click save as. So I'm gonna save it as a PNG file. That way it might be a little bit better quality, although for what we're doing here, it probably doesn't matter. And I'll just name it car save. All right, and now we can minimize or close pick pick there. And then we can go to here, let's get rid of that picture that's on top of the data. Here, actually, let me make a copy of this so we can compare them side by side. So make a copy of the plot. And on this one, I'll click and I'll hit delete to get rid of that car. Now I'll right click fill picture from a file and now we'll click the car image and here that's fine except I guess it kind of stretched it so that it fills the entire space and maybe that's not exactly the right dimensions that we want we don't want it to be stretched that way we could fix that by cropping it in a different way or not cropping it to begin with leaving that empty space in the top and the bottom but those are things you can play with. So again, when we look at these two graphs side by side, you can see here that the dots are very clearly visible as well as the grid lines are very clearly visible on top of the picture of the car. And here, some of the points are slightly discolored because that picture of the car is on top. Just a couple of different options for you there. Now, let me show you something incredibly stupid we could do. And let me undo this. Suppose instead of having these little blue dots, we wanted to change them to tiny pictures of cars. So let me make this small. I'm going to make it not as transparent. All right, and now we can click the picture, copy it, control C, click one of the points, and then hit control V and that changes our dots to tiny pictures of cars. I think this is an awful idea. I think it looks terrible, but hey, just because you have the power to do something doesn't mean you should, but I'll give you the power anyway. Now let me show you one other interesting thing we could do. And again, let me make a copy of this chart and then paste it over here. Here's a little bar chart telling us how many cars were compact, large, midsize, etc. in this data set. We could do a similar kind of trick. Let's make the car a little bigger, maybe make it a little skinnier, and let's rotate it so that it's more or less straight up and down. And then let's copy it, Control C, click on one of the bars here and you'll know when you've done the right thing when the all the bars have little dots around the outsides that means you've selected the bars and then we can paste that image 
onto the 3D bar graph here. Now again, I think this looks absolutely terrible, but it's an option. Maybe there's a use case here that makes sense. But in general, when you're making a graph, again, you want to keep it as simple as possible. As a statistician, I would recommend don't use a 3D bar chart when that third dimension doesn't add anything. If you want to get rid of the three-dimensional idea here, we can right-click on the bars, go to 3D rotation, and we can get rid of that by making the X rotation zero, the Y rotation zero, and now we just have a nice flat bar chart here. We could also paste that picture of a car, and maybe now it doesn't look quite so terrible, but again, this is something I would not recommend doing, but again, there might be some case where this is a legitimate thing to do to make a graph really look better. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching the how to insert pictures in graphs in Excel video. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, please give me a thumbs down and leave me a comment telling me what you didn't like. Have a good day and I wish you the best of luck in all of your studies. Bye-bye.